Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants, both indoors and outside. In today's video, we're talking about bone meal. So we dug into the scientific literature and we're gonna debunk some myths and talk about whether or not this product is worth your purchase. So this applies to both houseplant people indoor gardeners and then obviously the outdoor gardening crew as well some of what i found is kind of interesting there's not a ton of data on this type of product yet which is surprising because i mean obviously it's been around for ages but there's i guess words of warning uh when using either bone meal or blood meal i'll be doing a video on that as well too here today not like in this video but in a separate one so bone meal does have nitrogen but it's mainly made up of phosphorus and calcium now it's important to note that if you are gardening outdoors in north america it is highly unlikely that your soil is calcium deficient actually i can kind of bet on it not being calcium deficient if you're having blossom end rot or signs of a calcium deficiency, it's likely your soil pH and it has little to no nothing to do with the actual soil and what it contains. And this is just because a lot of North America is ground by glaciers and that means there's a ton of calcium just naturally in our soils based on how they were formed. However, the higher levels of phosphorus um, can be valuable and higher levels of calcium can be valuable for those in the houseplant community or people who are using soilless mediums, meaning container gardeners, cannabis growers, that sort of thing. So you can see where it would benefit someone in a soilless medium growing scenario, but not maybe necessarily someone that's growing in the ground in your regular environment. So one of the biggest claims when it comes to bone meal is that it helps increase root development or that it just helps with better root development in general. And so when we look at these studies um, or the way that people do these studies maybe at home on their own is they will obviously show a difference between the control and then obviously something that has had bone meal applied. And it, it would be um, accurate for them to see a root increase or an increase in root production and the reason for this is because roots respond well to phosphorus phosphorus causes a ton of root biomass so if you've watched some of my my transplanting video that either came out or is coming out you can see my roots on my plants are pretty heavy duty and it is because i fertilize with quite a bit of foss in those initial seedling stages before I do the bump up. That is a good thing. Obviously, it's gonna help reduce transplant shock. It's going to help with just the plant's survival in general. And if we're doing a container garden, or if we are looking at transplanting a shrub outdoors, that sort of thing, we want a um, high root volume because the more roots we have volume wise, the more sacrificial lambs we can have without feeling bad about potential breakage or die off that may occur whether that be from just rough transplanting uh, forgetting the water that sort of thing however when it comes to using bone meal i would never or i would um i guess warn against or deter people from using bone meal in scenarios that they're either using mycorrhizal fungi they purchased it or they have plants that are heavily reliant on the mycorrhizal fungi so that would be shrubs trees um perennials that sort of thing and the reason for that and i discussed this lightly in my transplant video or my bumping up video looking at how to apply microbes is when we have a lot of root it means we're able to locate all the phosphorus and all the nitrogen and all the products we do need for that plant to survive and so therefore it doesn't need to rely on things like mycelial web to collect the nutrients it needs so in order for us to gain that symbiosis or to capitalize on the mycelial network without 
necessarily using fertilizer or increasing root biomass would be to cut back on the amount of phosphorus available. And so one of the ways we would cut back on this would be to use inorganic or uh, one hit type fertilizers, liquids, that sort of thing, and steer away from more permanent slow release fertilizers, such as the bone meal in this case. And because bone meal is a slow release, they'll be released over months and months and months. It technically can suppress mycelial growth and make those, those spores dormant for extended periods of time um, until all that bone meal is used up. And then, I mean, there's obviously, the, at that point, there's the argument, well, if the root system is amplified to a larger extent because of this phosphorus, is that mycelial web ever going to be activated because that plant already has a reach that's big enough for phosphate cost, um, collections? And so, I mean, the answer to that may be yes. And some studies do show that that is the case there. So if you are um, going for like the living soil, Elaine Ingham type soil profile, then I would stay away from bone meal. If you are just trying to grow stuff and you're not too concerned about the mycelial web or building that up, then of course use the bone meal. I mean, it doesn't really matter. For annuals, using the mycelial web will help you to an extent through droughts and that sort of thing. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, focus on that too, too much, or I wouldn't put too much stock into that. So that is something to keep in mind there. And so the reason, uh, I guess, that the, so that is something to keep in mind when using the bone meal, just in general. Um, it doesn't tend to affect the carbon to nitrogen ratios that much. It doesn't cause excessive growth and because the nitrogen is relatively low and it is usually advertised as like a bloom formula or a flower formula because it is really high in phosphorus and then obviously calcium, which all supports bloom and fruit and that sort of thing. So yeah, I would use bone meal um, in a scenario where mycelium and that symbiosis isn't necessarily a must have, or it may be really hard to colonize that only because it's in a container, maybe it's getting hot, or in house plant scenario where we have uh, wildly fluctuating moisture levels, um, say, or in just house plants in general, I'm not convinced the mycelium symbiosis is there yet or that the products are there yet for that to, that mycelium to form um, because it is really spe species specific. So I would use bone meal in that application. I would not use it in a perennial, a shrub or a tree scenario. Um, and then for annuals, it's going to be your preference and what you want to do. But if you're doing mycelium and you're inoculating, I would say stay away from bone meal at this time. So that's all I have for you guys today on bone meal and plants. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you've used bone meal before, if you liked it, if you didn't, didn't like it, exactly how you applied it and all that fun stuff. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.